My name's Rana. Hi everyone, Robot Man here. Today we are going to do what I call a maze runner. That's right, we're going to build a robot that can travel through a maze as quickly as possible. Can your robot be the fastest to get through the maze? Let's see if you can do it. Here's some rules and tips. So we are going to set the movement motors first because whenever you make a vehicle you need to tell the hub where you've plugged in the motors. I'm going to choose CND. I usually choose CND and it's easy to remember where to plug things in when I'm building it. Um, so it depends on what your maze looks like but uh, I imagine that you'll have a start line and you'll need to go forward. So I recommend you choose that top pink block there and make it go forwards. Uh, seconds is what I often do because I find it easy to estimate in seconds. Uh, centimeters isn't always accurate depending on how big your wheels are and how you built your robot. Degrees is interesting. A lot of people think they're going to go a certain amount of degrees when they're turning and things, but uh, that's how many degrees the wheels turned, not how much the robot turned. So we're just going to go uh, seconds 
and I'm going to make it, for example, go maybe 3.2 seconds. So it goes from the start line to the first corner. And then after it gets to the first corner, we're going to make a turn. And the turning block is this one here. And if you want it to do a wide turn, you can leave it at 30. But if you want to do it like a sharp turn, like a spin, then you'd make it 100. You could turn right or left, depending on your maze. And again, maybe seconds is good. I might turn for 1.2 seconds or something like that. So when I get that much code, I'd probably test that um, to see if it gets to the first corner properly and if it turns enough. And if it doesn't turn enough, then you make that number a bit bigger, wouldn't you? Um, or if it turns too much, make the number smaller. Likewise here, you can just change these numbers, these values, whenever you need to, to make it go a bit further. You might say, oh, it goes too far at the start, and it ends up to something like 2.7 seconds because it's going too far at the start. Uh, the most important thing is that you always start your robot in exactly the same position every single time. And once you start coding it, I wouldn't um, spend too much time modifying your robot because that'll change all the values too. So uh, we didn't set the speed at the start. The speed uh, defaults to about 75, I think, but uh, you can change the speed to whatever you like. Again, though, I wouldn't change it. After I've set it, I wouldn't change it. Obviously, it's not good to go above 100. You can't go faster than 100 anyway, but I've had errors, and uh, any of you who know me would know that if you go above 100, then you're going to have errors with your coding. Um, it might not go straight and that sort of thing. So stick to a number 100 or less. Some people like to go 99th, and we go maximum speed, and the goal is to get around the maze as quickly as possible. But you might find that 80 is even more reliable. So I would set the speed and test it and then see if you can get to the first corner. And once you get to the first corner, then um, do the next stage. You might go forward for another uh, one second and then you might turn again. This time you might want to turn a bit, a bit more wide at turn. So you can just do something like that. Or if it's a left turn, you can change it to left, whatever. So your goal is to get lots of blocks here. Uh, you probably, probably end up with maybe 10 or 12 or 16. It depends how big your maze is, but you'll end up with a lot of blocks here. But basically, you just keep going forward and turning, going forward and turning, going forward and turning until you get to the end. And see if you can get to the checkpoints along the way. Hopefully, the teacher has put some checkpoints on the maze so that you can at least get to the checkpoint and see if you can get them the quickest. But... Someone can go all the way through the maze, and that's awesome. Make sure that you are constantly are checking your code and that you test your robot over and over again. There's lots of trial and error involved in this activity, and vitally, it's important that you start in exactly the same spot. I've said it before, I'm going to start again. Start in exactly the same spot for every single testing you do. Otherwise, you'll go a bit crazy if you keep having different results just because you started in different spots. Now it is time to pause the video and leave the rules up on the screen. Obviously you'll end up with more code than this, but now it is time for some teacher instructions. Uh, you can make it as complicated as you like, but I always start with some masking tape. So I created the rectangle on the floor, and then inside the rectangle I just used masking tape. I just estimated, you've got to make the gaps pretty big for the robot to get through, maybe 30 centimetre gaps or one foot gaps. And then I just, uh, used a bit of artistic uh, license to create something that looked unique and put a few bits on angles and ripped off a little bit here and there and added a bit at the end to make it look good and then you just have a starting point and a finishing point maybe or they could be going to the start and then back to the back to the start uh, I found some timber so you might want to add some timber to your maze that always makes it a bit more interesting especially especially if uh, the kids have made like wheels on the side of the robot to guide it through some of the parts. You don't have to put timber on all the walls. Um, and you could even use things like books or um, even sticks or anything that's uh, long and thin that would sort of act as a barrier to the robots leaving the area. So some of it could still be taped walls and some of it could be um, timber. And you could just say to the kids, you can't go over the tape. Your robot cannot touch the tape and see if you can get from A to B and maybe even A to B and then back to A and you can have checkpoints along the way. If I love using Velcro. If you buy yourself a roll of this Velcro stuff you'll find you use it a lot. This is called hooks. This will hook onto the carpet nicely once you stick it onto the timber. So if you stick some 
little squares or rectangles on the end of each piece of timber then it will stay in place really well on the carpet so I recommend getting some velcro tape if you want to make your maze more solid for the kids robots with all my lessons in the description you'll find some resources that you can use to score events even things like knockouts or measuring times and distances and stuff there's also some student assessment self-assessment sheets and some other assessment tools like this one which is a worksheet where teachers can fill in a score for each kid during the lesson. I hope you have fun with your mazes. Uh, don't forget you can add to it and modify it as much as you like and check out this video if you want to know how to make your cars go super fast. <laughs>